Web3 PI, it's a developer tool chain that brings the ease of Web2 to Web3. It aims to enable hyper-composable multi-platform uh, Web3 applications. There's a huge problem going largely unnoticed in the Web3 ecosystem. It's the integration problem. In Web2, applications are lightweight and all complex logic is executed on central servers. When a user tweets, the app simply makes a request to Twitter's API. This enables apps to integrate dozens of APIs seamlessly. But in Web3, applications handle this complex logic themselves because central servers have been replaced with peer-to-peer -peer networks and expensive smart contracts. For example, when a user creates a DAO proposal, the app might need to serialize inputs, upload to a distributed storage network, and transact with multiple smart contracts. Web3 apps can utilize JavaScript wrappers to handle these complexities, but this leads to an integration nightmare. JavaScript wrappers lack standardization, bloat applications, and cannot be used in other languages. The integration problem significantly hinders innovation and adoption in Web3, and it's only getting worse as Web3 grows in complexity. Web3 needs to be simple. We can do better. Enter Web3 API, a standard that makes integrating Web3 as easy as Web2. Web3 API allows any type of application to execute complex protocol logic on the fly. Instead of embedding various JavaScript wrappers, applications just need the Web3 API client. Web3 API powered dApps will download lightweight WebAssembly modules from IPFS and execute API requests directly inside the app. Any protocol is just a request away. Web3 API enables many use cases that are yet to be fully realized in Web3. For example, Web3 protocols can now be used in any type of application, such as games and IoT devices. Compose infinite Web3 protocols without bloating the size of the package or requiring central servers. Evolve existing protocols by publishing custom extensions. And lastly, create dynamic in-app experiences, no rebuilds required. Web3 API's architecture is simple. Once a dApp is equipped with the Web3 API client, it can now choose to send queries to any protocol given its decentralized API endpoint, also known as an IPFS hash. The API's package will be downloaded and all required WebAssembly modules will be instantiated at runtime. The application's queries can now be resolved, leading to the invocation of one or more Web3 API modules. APIs can also query each other, leading to a whole new level of composability and extendability. So how exactly does Web3 API benefit Filecoin's ecosystem? First and foremost, Web3 APIs must be stored and accessed via decentralized storage networks. Filecoin and IPFS perfectly satisfy this need providing a global file system where applications can access APIs whenever they're needed. Additionally, Web3 API streamlines Filecoin's application integration process, making developer onboarding much, much easier. Instead of developers using one of Filecoin's SDKs written in their desired language, they can instead use a Web3 API client to query Filecoin's API. And lastly, but certainly not least, Web3 API can speed up Filecoin's core development process Instead of building and maintaining Filecoin's core components in multiple languages, like it's being done today, uh, these same components can be authored as WebAssembly-based Web3 APIs. This will remove code duplication and drastically reduce maintenance costs into the future. Now let's see a quick demo. So here we have an example of simple storage project. What we're gonna first do is we're gonna set up the test environment what this is going to do is in the background, it's going to set up the various different services that we have running for our project, which is IPFS, Ethereum, and then also a subgraph. So next what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll deploy our contracts. Um, this is done just as it is normally done with Ethers or Biddler or Web3.js. And then lastly, we'll build and publish our Web3 API. Here you can see we provide an IPFS node, a subgraph, and also a test ENS a, a, a domain to be used. Um, that ENS domain will um, direct to the, uh, to the uh, IPFS hash. And so now lastly, once this is built, we can actually get a, a content ID for our package on IPFS. So let's go ahead and check out what this is. If we look at the package, we have a query and a mutation WASM module. We also have a schema for our simple storage project. Uh, here's the mutations and the queries. 
And then lastly, um, we have the manifest file, which describes the structure of the project. This is identical to the protocols build directory. And so lastly, we'll actually see this in, uh, see this in action. So instead of writing, let's say some tests in JavaScript, what we've done instead is we've created a simple JSON format and it will execute a series of queries through the command line against our protocol, against our Web3 API. And so here, as you can see, we're getting some data from the contract using the get data query. We're setting data using the set data mutation. And then lastly, we're querying the subgraph to get some historical uh, past events. And all of this uh, just by using some very simple queries that look like this. So the developer experience looks just like Web2 using, uh, using GraphQL or REST. And so we'll jump back into the presentation. Recently, uh, we finished as finalists and won several prizes at HackFS. Since then, we have been engaging with various projects to understand how Web3 API can solve their problems. The current North Star of the project is the Web3 Hub, a place for anyone to discover, use, and integrate Web3 APIs. If you're interested in contacting the team behind Web3 API, please fill out the form linked below. Thank you so much for your time. PyGate is a Python interface for the Filecoin network. Our team developed PyGate for this past summer's HackFest event. We were selected as one of the 10 finalists from over 130 projects. Our motivation for PyGate is to open the door to the exciting new world of Filecoin decentralized storage to the army of Pythonista developers. These are the results from a February 2020 Stack Overflow survey of over 65,000 developers. Python was overwhelmingly voted as the most wanted language. It was also by far the most asked about language on Stack Overflow in 2020. Machine learning, data science, enterprise web applications, digital preservation systems, and many other innovative tools rely on the flexibility and consistency of Python to help solve complex problems for people around the world. However, Filecoin applications and the popular textile developer tooling suite are both based on Golang and JavaScript. That is until now. Textile's PowerGate is a multi-tiered file storage API built on Filecoin and IPFS, and it is an index builder for Filecoin data. PowerGate is the officially recommended solution for developers who want an easier interface and better performance from Filecoin, but who prefer to manage their own nodes. PowerGate is a multi-tiered st multi storage solution that stores data in the interplanetary file system as so-called hot storage layer, and in Filecoin as a cold storage layer. PowerGate exposes higher level APIs for developers that facilitate easier interaction with IPFS and Filecoin nodes. PowerGate also handles wallet management, long-term deal management, and provides many features that improve the overall experience of being a storage client on Filecoin. The PyGate team was inspired by the fact that the PowerGate API is made available as gRPC protocol buffers. This means its messages can be easily translated into other languages such as Python. Filecoin and IPFS create content identifiers or SIDs for files. SIDs are based on the content's cryptographic hash. That means any difference in content will produce a different SID and the same piece of content added to two different Filecoin nodes using the same settings will produce exactly the same SID. Critically, the SID also serves as a content address that points to files in Filecoin to enable storage market actions on it, as well as retrieval from the network. The PowerGate API uses a Filecoin file system or FFS to manage all the necessary state and capabilities to provide multi-tiered file storage using IPFS and Filecoin. The FFS is the primary API for storing and retrieving data, tracking long-term deals on Filecoin, and allowing data persisted on Filecoin to be available on IPFS. Here we see the FFS API commands to stage a file to IPFS hot storage. PowerGate returns the file SID. We can then use the SID to push the file to Filecoin cold storage. PowerGate returns a job ID that we can use to track the state of the SID as it goes through the Filecoin storage market process. The PowerGate API is made available as gRPC endpoints. gRPC is a high performance remote procedure call framework developed and open sourced by Google. It generates cross platform client and server bindings for many languages. It has a simple and portable messaging specification. In PyGate, we use the Py Python gRPC bindings to convert the PowerGate API commands into Python methods. Here we see the Python class for the FFS client. All these methods are bundled into a single package, which is then made available through the wildly popular and effective Python package index repository. This means that all the power of the PowerGate is now available to Python developers 
with a simple pip install command. The PyGate gRPC repository is MIT licensed and available for clones and forks on GitHub. It includes quick start examples like this one. You can see here how easy it is to create a new FFS on a PowerGate server and stage a file to IPFS, including helpers for the critical chunking process. Then push the file to file cold storage. In this example, we are also overriding the default FFS configuration file to enable specific instructions for the SID, such as what the maximum price is we are willing to pay to store this SID, as well as which miners to trust and which ones to exclude. We then run a check to make sure the SID is pinned. And then for the full round trip, we request the file back from Filecoin, reconstruct it and save it to disk. The simplicity and succinct notation of Python makes these steps easy to follow in the code. And here's the output of that script. A FFS is created. It is assigned a security token. We grab the repository's readme as a test file. We add it to IPFS hot storage. We push it to Filecoin cold storage. We output the custom JSON config file we included as part of the push so that we can check the parameters used for the SID storage. We see a list of SIDs pinned by this FFS after the configuration file output. In this case, it's just one because it's a brand new FFS with only one test file. And then we can see that this file has been retrieved from Filecoin and saved to disk. The PyGate gRPC package is very useful for embedding in standalone scripts like this one I created for the Filecoin slingshot competition. I'm using it at the end of a Python download and packaging pipeline to automatically upload a tar package to Filecoin mainnet using my PowerGate FFS. Other slingshot projects that are using PyGate include FinFile, GeoGuessr, Orion Deep Learning Cloud, and Movies.ax. PyGate is especially powerful when bundled into Python web frameworks like Django or Flask. For the PyGate project, we built a reference web app with Flask to serve as a developer quick start. It provides a dashboard for file management, a simple and easy user interface using Bootstrap and Jinja templates, the ability to select single or multiple files for upload to Filecoin via PowerGate, the ability to download files from Filecoin, local storage of tokens, the ability to edit storage configurations, tracking wallet balances, and reviewing logs of user activities. The PyGate team continues to maintain and support the gRPC client for our own use and community adoption. Most recently, we entered the Gitcoin Apollo hackathon and used PyGate and Flask to develop a prototype for the deplatformer concept. Deplatformer is a response to the delete Facebook movement. It's providing tools to help you liberate your data from platforms like Facebook and Google Photos and move it to Web3 networks like Filecoin storage. If you're a Pythonista or just Python curious, there's no better time than now to jump in and explore, as the developer opportunities for the Filecoin community are virtually unlimited at the moment. PyGate will help you get up and running quickly. The simple pip install will hand you the keys to this amazing new network. You can clone our project from GitHub. Issue reports and pull requests are most welcome. Thank you. So my name is Belma, and I run a blockchain research and development company called Node Factory. We have built uh, several things for uh, Filecoin, and I'm happy to present you PhilSnap, which is basically a MetaMask plugin for Filecoin. I'm going to show you briefly how it works and uh, how you can start using it and integrate in your apps. So I believe you have all heard uh, about MetaMask. Uh, it's um, the most famous wallet for Ethereum. And they have both web and mobile versions. And the numbers say that it is really the most famous as they have over 1 million do downloads on uh, Chrome only. Uh, what we can achieve now with MetaMask uh, is a plugin for Filecoin dApps because uh, MetaMask uh, this year offered a plugin system. So you can build your own plugin and connect uh, anything to MetaMask. And that's what we did with uh, Filecoin. So uh, MetaMask plugin system, the snaps, is, those are still in uh, the beta version. The release was planned in Q4 uh, this year, but I hope they will achieve uh, the release regarding that. So each uh, officially downloaded MetaMask uh, has 
this plugin system, currently it has to be a separated uh, download. So in case you want to test, make sure you are downloading the right version with the plugin system. So how it works on the left side, you have a DEP uh, that should integrate our adapter. Uh, that's a small library in JavaScript, TypeScript that uh, contains functions such as installing SNAP and exposing API of the SNAP. So you can uh, make transfers, sign transactions, uh, get transaction history, and so on. So basically the adapter is just a set of functions uh, that you can use with SNAP. And it's uh, published on an NPM library. So I'm gonna show you a small demo. This uh, demo is uh, hosted on the fieldnet.netlify.app. In case you wanna try it as well, make sure to install the MetaMask uh, version and you can uh, start sending around field with MetaMask. Also, just note that this, this demo is uh, just displaying all the functions. Uh, that uh, SNAP has and which functions does it have. Uh, so the standard procedure of connecting MetaMask uh, with the DEP and here is also installing the SNAP uh, in the MetaMask itself. So here you can see all the functions uh, that SNAP uh, has. So you can get the address, the public key, the account balance. You can also export user pri private key and display it to them. And you can also switch uh, the networks. The first thing uh, there. Uh, so you can support your DAP with multiple networks and should work with MetaMask as well. Uh, here I'm going to show you how the transfer works, basically. Uh, the confirmations windows are a little bit ugly at the moment, but I hope they will fix this by the time they finish the beta stage. So this is transferring from one account to another. was a fast transfer. And in MetaMask, you can see here what you actually get when you install the SNAP and that's a uh, field balance. And one important thing would, for dev developers would be is probably the account transactions and of course signing transactions. So, it, you, you can send any uh, any call to your API and just allow user to sign that message and make uh, actions on behalf of them using their keys. So that's the all functionality that Snap has and that you can use to integrate in your app. In case you want to find out more and try it for yourself, you can check out our repo. There is also documentation and please uh, feel free to leave your feedback, any suggestions and bugs that you can find. So thank you.